Welcome to our harvest service. Wherever you are, near or far, you are most welcome. My name is Mark Poole and I am the curate of this benefice of rural East York, serving the villages and communities of Stockton on the Forest, Wart Hill, Holtby and Dunnington. And may I just start by saying a huge thank you to all of you who sent in video, audio and messages of warmest wishes and congratulations to mark my ordination a week last Friday in York Minster. It was a lovely surprise and I have really cherished all that you said. And it was the icing on the cake to a wonderful and joyous weekend of celebrations. So thank you very much. And so let us pray as we enter into worship together. In the fading of the summer sun, the shortening of days, cooling breeze, swallows flight and moonlight rays, we see the Creator's hand and we praise you. In the browning of leaves once green, morning mists, autumn chill, Fruit that falls, frost's first kiss. We see the Creator's hand and we praise you. For the promise of harvest contained within a seed, for the oak tree within the acorn, the bread within the grain, the apple within the pip, the mystery of nature, gift wrapped for us to sow. We see the Creator's hand and we praise you. Creator God, forgive our moments of ingratitude, the spiritual blindness that prevents us from appreciating the wonder that is this world. The endless cycle of nature of life and death and rebirth. Forgive us for taking without giving, reaping without sowing. Open our eyes to see you, our lips to praise, our hands to share. And may our feet tread lightly on the path we tread and our footsteps be worthy of following, for they lead to you. Amen.
For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. What is Harvest Festival for us? Churches filled with offerings of vegetables and fruit, meals together, baked potatoes, apple pie evenings of entertainment, a celebration of all the earth has given before she settles into her winter sleep. This year, we give thanks, but our exile is not entirely over and our celebrations are at a distance. This year, we are grateful for all we daily receive and mindful of all that is lost. This year, Any illusion of self-reliance is blown away with the falling leaves. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gained me this wealth, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors as he is doing today. We still our minds. We turn to the Lord, in whose hands our future and our past rest secure. In our lamentation and our joy, woven together, God's love is seen. In our unity and separation, we are one, brothers and sisters in the risen Christ. We turn to God, who calls us and waits for us who runs to us and welcomes us. Where we have despaired and lost sight of your love, Lord, have mercy. Where we have given way to anger and not loved our neighbour as ourselves, Christ, have mercy. Where we have been wasteful and forgotten your care for your whole creation, Lord, have mercy. Eternal God, you crown the year with your goodness and you give us the fruits of the earth in their season. Grant that we may use them to your glory, for the relief of those in need and for our own well-being. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, What should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool! This very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. He said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear, for life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? If then you are not able to do so small a thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? 
Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not keep striving for what you are to eat and what you are to drink, and do not keep worrying. For it is the nations of the world that strive after all these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Hello, I'm Nikki, a worshipper in the Benefice and project leader at CareScent. As almost everyone will know, CareScent is a breakfast centre for people in need in York, those experiencing homelessness or general social exclusion of any kind. Every year, the Benefice is really generous in its support of CareScent, and we're grateful to you for that. Obviously this year, has been different, different for everyone, and very different for us here at CareScent. We haven't been able to run our usual cafe service six mornings a week, and we had to decide what to do in order to carry on reaching people in need. So what we have done is we've been delivering packed lunches, first of all to people in hotels who were housed and kept off the streets during the first lockdown. As time has gone by, those people have reduced, although they have been cared for and no one has gone straight back on the streets. But we've had a growing number of people coming to the gate each day to collect a packed lunch, and now that's what we're doing. A care sent packed lunch is exactly what you would expect if you were going on a school trip. It's a filled roll, it's a carton of juice, some fruit, a packet of crisps and a chocolate biscuit. Um, all in a lovely brown paper bag. Here's one I prepared earlier. And we like to write what's on the what's in the sandwich, and um, sometimes draw a little heart just to remind people that we're still caring for them as best we can. Obviously, this new this new way of doing things is not the same. We have lost a lot of the community that that is so important at CareScent. We don't gather to cook together anymore. We don't gather to play games. And um, giving out pat lunches from the church steps doesn't give us the same opportunity to spend time with people and to talk to them. But all is not lost. Several of the customers have said that they appreciate that we've kept the community going. And if they feel the community is still going, then we have achieved something. It's frustrating, but just as everything else in life, we have faith that we will get through it. And in the meantime, we just need to keep going as best we can. This harvest time, we're not asking for our usual requests of cans and, and, and cereal and all of the list that is so traditional from Care Centre this time of year. In order to be able to work flexibly, we have decided to ask this year for donations of money. Now, that's a tricky thing to ask for at harvest time. Um, I found it quite awkward, but um, it is what we need and we believe that it's, it's the best way of, of getting support for Care Center this harvest time. So it's half past eight, the sandwich team are here and I thought we would just have a look at them in action. So here are Jill and Alison filling sandwich bags. And also on the team is Mark. And here are some of today's special donations of cakes and pastries, which will be a really welcome addition to the sandwiches. These past few months at CareScent have been pretty frustrating. Before lockdown happened, we had established two social afternoons and we were on the point of launching a third one. And these were an absolutely brilliant way of working with people alongside them, not just doing things for them, but really doing things with them and being with them. 
and we were establishing a real sense of community and then it all stopped. A hymn that I have come to really love is Brother, Sister, Let Me Serve You and the first two lines are pretty straightforward. Brother, Sister, Let Me Serve You, Let Me Be As Christ To You. That's not so hard, is it? It's it's nice to do things for people and it's lovely to be needed. But the hymn carries on. Pray that I may have the strength to let you be my servant too. And that's where certainly I sometimes struggle. It's not so easy to relinquish control, to say that you're going to let someone do things for you, that you're going to learn from someone else. In a way, it was as if we had sowed the seeds for one harvest, but got something completely different as a result. It was, and it is, months of making and giving out sandwiches. Instead of feeling like we're making progress, it's been months of wondering if we're doing the right thing, if we're keeping people safe, if we're doing enough. So where's God in that? Where is God? when you long for one thing, but the reality is very different. What I'm learning at the moment is that things are as they are. And if the things that we've been expecting don't happen, if we don't get the harvest we expected, then God is in what we get instead. And that's really true of CareScent at the moment. God is in the volunteers, those who have managed to stay and help throughout lockdown, throughout everything that's happened. Those who've had to stay away, but have sent messages of support, have sent donations, have prayed. God is in the new volunteers who've come to be with us and help out in a time of crisis. God is in all the people who've sent donations and messages of goodwill. And of course, God is in the customers who are blessed with more optimism and resilience than I will ever have and whose gratitude and encouragement have made and continue to make all the frustration and all the uncertainty worthwhile. Today's gospel reading reminds us that we can't be certain of what the future holds and it tells us not to worry. And that's all very well. But worrying things happen, and worrying is a very human thing to do. The important thing is not to let our worries consume us, not to let go of our hope. And hope isn't just a blind optimism that everything will be all right in the end. Hope is the ability to see things just as they are and to bear them in the knowledge that God knows us and knows what we need and that we can trust in that. And safe in that knowledge, we're given a bit of breathing space. So my prayer for us all this week is that we will find that breathing space among our busyness and our uncertainty and our worry. Space to see the things, maybe only tiny things, that are beautiful and joyful and life-giving. Space to consider the lilies. Amen. Let us pray. O God of our salvation, O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, in your strength you set fast the mountains and are girded about with might. You still the raging of the seas and the roaring of their waves and the clamour of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth tremble at your marvels. The gates of the morning and evening sing your praise. O 
Lord God, you send your blessings upon us. You visit the earth and water it. You make it very plenteous. And yet, like a grief, the pandemic dominates our lives. We pray for those who are most affected, those who are sick and those who mourn, those struggling to recover, the lonely, isolated and scared, those whose livelihoods are at risk, those whose physical and mental health has been damaged over these months. May they know that you are with all who suffer, that you walk beside them to strengthen them and to give them hope and peace. Grant wisdom, strength and patience to all who are working to find a path through our predicament. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The river of God is full of water. You prepare grain for your people, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. You soften the ground with showers and bless its increase. This year has shown us that the people society rewards are not the same as the people society needs. But you, Lord, love all, equally and infinitely. Help us, your redeemed children, to greet all as our brother and sister, to serve and be served in our turn, to give and to receive, to see Christ in the outcast, the poor, the refugee, those separated from us by distance or politics, those who are too close and those who are too far. Open our eyes, Lord, and quicken us to strive for a fairer world. May the pastures of the wilderness flow with goodness and the hills be girded with joy. May the meadows be clothed with flocks of sheep and the valleys stand so thick with corn that they shall laugh and sing. We pray for those who are denied the blessings of a fruitful earth, for those who suffer in themselves for the greed and wastefulness of us all. The shrinking rivers, the empty lakes, the burning trees, the fertile soil replaced with dust. As these affect first the poorest and most vulnerable and then the affluent and those who thought themselves secure, grant us a vision of a new future. A future that values every person, every creature, every planet. A future where fairness is the air we breathe, where honesty is the grass beneath our feet and love for all the sun which warms and gives us light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, as we seek to bring about your kingdom, to renew your creation, grant that our path be guided by our eternal home, where the saints have gone before. That new heaven and new earth where mourning and crying and pain will be no more where they have no need of sun or moon, for the glory of God is its light and its lamp is the Lamb. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
shall go out with joy and be led forth in peace. And the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy. And the trees of the field shall clap, shall clap their hands. And the trees of the field shall clap their hands. And the trees of the field shall clap their hands. And the trees of the field shall clap their hands. And you'll go out with joy. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. And the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy. And the trees of the field shall clap, shall clap their hands. And the trees of the field shall clap. Thank you to all of you who have worked so hard to bring this service together today and for your generosity in supporting our Harvest Charity Care Centre. Also, thank you for your harvest and autumn pictures. You've been so generous that we shall be using more of them in future services. Next week, our services theme will be God's Kingdom is like a banquet. And if you have any photos of yourselves at home enjoying food, we would love to receive them. Let's ask for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the broad expanse of God's love and the abundance of his riches in glory shape your perspective on your own life and needs, including the things which disappoint you. May the eyes of your heart be open to all the blessings which surround you. May this awareness produce a harvest of generosity in your spirit. May thankfulness rise up within you, not just during this short harvest season, but day after day, from the early morning until you retire for the night. May your prayers reflect gratitude, whilst also acknowledging the needs of others whose situations are so drastically different. May thoughts of Jesus fill your mind, and hunger for God to drive your soul, and love for the Lord guide your speech and your actions. And finally, may grace, peace, and the love of the triune God protect, defend, and empower you for all that awaits you in his service. Amen. And the